Hello everyone, this is Endgame Arts, we're doing another unboxing, another breakdown, another demo. This is The Witcher 3, The Wild Hunt, the complete edition. Uh, I, I'll start off by stating that I've never played any of the Witcher games, so this is the first time I ever took to play a Witcher game. Not to say I don't have Witcher games, I just never got around to playing them. Well, this complete edition actually comes with um, all the 16 free DLC that ever released. It's all on the disc. It comes with both the expansions, uh, Blood and Wine and Heart of Stone. Both are on the disc as well. It comes with patch uh, 1.30 on the disc. Uh, and then, But there was a small update. It was 1.31. But it was like only about 60 megabytes or something like that. So I don't think it's too crucial. I just said um, multiple uh, fixes and stuff like that. Well, like I said, I've never really sat down and played any of Witcher games. So this is the first time. As you see, we're going right now going through the settings. I was really impressed with how many settings there are. I really like games that has a lot of option settings. I just, I like my options. I like the alterations and stuff like that in settings. But, as I said, I've never played a Witcher game. This is the first one I ever played it. Now, I do have Witcher 1 on the play, uh, my PC. And I do have Witcher 2 on my th Xbox 360. But I just never got around to playing them. So, this is the first time I played it. So, there's that. And um, I know that this was actually the first Witcher, uh, Witcher game to actually be like a full-fledged open-world game. And if anybody's been watching my channel for quite a while or just know me personally, uh, you know I'm not into open-world games. I just, I tend to not really get into them. They're just not my kind of genre to get into. Now, I'm not saying I don't like open-world games. I'm just saying that most of them do not f f just interest me enough to keep at them. I've only played like a... Uh, I've only been a few hand, one handful that I've ever beaten. Well, Witcher Three's world, uh, I'll get to the point. Is it still suffers from the things I don't like about open world games? So I probably won't come back to this game personally. But for what it is, I am quite impressed for just a huge landscape and everything you can explore, and the sheer amount of depth there is in the game. It is quite impressive. As you can see, I'm swimming right now, and it's. I was blown away. I was able to do that. I was, was like, oh wow, I can go swimming and all that stuff. And the graphics and everything is just, there's no denying it for the sheer size of it and the, uh, how well it runs. It's just gorgeous looking. Uh, I, it's just, it's just, there's lots of things I would like to cover about The Witcher 3, but there's just not enough time for me to cover every basis. And just the sheer fact, I just didn't f desire to keep playing the game. But other than that, you got a huge open world map. It's really big. It's pretty big. Now, I don't know if this includes the uh, expansion spots right here. I don't know where the expansions come from or what they entail because I just, like I said, I've lost interest in the game. I really just recorded this kind of like, this is like what you're seeing right now is me actually trying to struggle to keep playing the game. Uh, there's a lots of equipment, lots of gear, lots of stuff you can even craft and upgrade and stuff like that. Step gemstones. You can sharpen your swords, get better swords, get certain swords and all that stuff you can even find ingredients make potions and make bombs and name uh, make certain items to help you uh forge and just certain things to help you just uh do your job as a witcher and that is to hunt for monsters and this game requires a lot of preparations for that kind of stuff now if you put the game on the easier difficulties i can see this game being pretty breezy so i recommend you if you've got some experience with the game or just uh, RPGs in general, I recommend that you at least put it on the hard difficulty. I don't recommend highest difficulty because you might get your uh, you might get you might get owned real quick. So just try to embrace the game. If but you've got some experience, start start on hard. That's the best way I say the best approach it for your first time playing it. That's if you don't want to just experience the story. Which other than the story, that's the problem I have is the fact that I don't know the story. That's just the bottom line, and uh, I know that it's not really the game's fault because I didn't play Witcher 1 and 2, and I'm not in a place to say I'm not available because I do have the game. I just never got around to playing them. And uh, I wish that they, uh, that the CD Projekt Red probably would have done like a port or something like that of Witcher 2, 1 and 2 at some point. How, as much as success they had with 1 and 2 and now 3, you'd think they could probably just afford like Blue Point or something like that to do a simple port or something like that of of the game because without the context of the uh, the first and second game I have no idea who the main character is a lot of the characters what we're even doing what's the point of it now I'm sure it'll catch up at some point within the main story I just couldn't bring myself to get around to doing it all doing it I just made it's not the game's fault I'm not trying to blame the game it's it could be easily my fault for not playing the games I just I just see like that it just I mean it was a missed opportunity for a good uh, sell for uh, a catch-up on the story and that wise, in that area. 
Now, as you saw, I was upgrading. There's upgrading abilities you can unlock and stuff like that and to increase yourself. Now, we're jumping right into the combat. And this is where I think the game actually suffers the most out of everything. Uh, the combat, it, it's good, but also it could have done, been done a lot better. I've often found myself I mean, jumping between enemies and trying to control who I'm attacking, what I'm trying to attacking. It felt very, very clunky. And just, this is where it hurt the most for me. And it, it kind of what stopped me from playing because it just, the combat was just, it was fluid, but also could have been done a lot better. Uh, I think they should have focused more on this a little bit more. Uh, I think they would would have been really great if they did like an Arkham Knight or Arkham Asylum kind of style than what they went with because it just it needed more a uh, bird's eye view of what's going on around me and due to the fact that the Witcher is supposed to have like these special senses and stuff like that it just felt like I was constantly hindered by my character getting in the way or the environment getting in the way or just I often found myself going through enemies and stuff like that or me attacking or swinging in some off direction. Or sometimes where the game would just immediately unlock off the character for some apparent reason. And it was just, it quickly became quite frustrating at some points. Now maybe it's just mean get good at the game or something like that. But I just, I don't know, I just, I didn't really get into it. I really wish that they would have probably spent more time making it a little bit more smoother and gameplay wise. It's one of the things I think it hurt the, my experience for me the most. Other than that, it's, it works great. You have your uh, small, uh, lighter attacks, which is more fast and fluid for your quick attacks. And then you got your uh, heavier attacks, which ignores armor, which then penetrates and then hits the hardest, but takes longer to swing. And then you have your spells, which I think the spells could have named. What really got aggravated me was that the spells don't have us more simpler names. They got all these Quoia, Ifwa, Awea, spelt, spelt names, and I often like, was fumbling around trying to find the spell I wanted to use. But not to say these spells are not useless or anything. There's like the the shield, which prevents a one like a hit from attack for one time, so it makes you like immune for one hit. You got a fire attack. You have like a, a telekinesis attack. You got like a uh, a, 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 a should you say a ball of power that can like slow down the enemy. It, it's got a lot of interesting spells, and you if you knew how to use them and you knew how to properly use them for their for certain situations, they can be very powerful. I just, like I said, I found myself fumbling with the combat a lot of times, though, because they just wasn't as fluid as I liked it would like to have been. Other than that, I think the game has great voice acting. A lot of people said the music's really good in this game, but I never noticed it, so maybe it's just me, but I mean, I, I, I'd never heard any music in the game, so I just, I don't guess I just, I'm not noticing it. But, uh, horse, that's the one thing I've always hated, is riding horses. It's a nightmare to ride this horse. I can never control the damn thing. Sorry for the uh, language, but I just, I've come to the point where horses are a bad omen to me in a game. I just, I can't stand riding horses in uh, these kinds of games. God, I hate it. <laughs> but, uh, I would prefer to be on foot throughout the entire game, but there's sadly some point, some quest where you're required to ride on a horse to chase down a person or something like that. I dread those so much. But, uh... As you are as a witcher, you pick up contracts and you pick up jobs and stuff like that. And you uh, pick up contracts to do money. That's how you survive in this game. you got to get contracts and make money. Especially if you put it on a harder difficulty. Because if you're on a harder difficulty, resting will not regenerate your life. So you really need to put abilities in regenerating life. Getting money, getting items to restore your life, and preparations. Now, there's a lot of th offer in this game. Sort of like I mean, dialogue. You can uh, approach they use certain dialogues to talk to certain people like you can choose how you want to say and there's no alignment system which that was very much appreciated too unless there's a hidden alignment I'm not aware of but uh, the, from what I can apparently know there's no alignment system so you can choose whatever you say and it's just how you want to approach that uh, the situation with that character as well as you have a persuasion skill where you can like manipulate the mind to name uh, how do you say like the force you can take control of a will's person's mind and get information that way but you got sometimes you want, might come across a more stubborn character and you can't get the information, so you got to train on that ability to get information. As I said, this game offers a lot, and I personally was not getting into it, but that doesn't mean it's a bad game. It's a game I'm sure you all will really enjoy and get into it. I just personally do not get into open world games. It's just not my forte. I just don't get into them. I try as hard as I could to play this game as much as I could, but I just I kept losing interest, and frankly, I just... I, since I don't know what's going on or have any blink of idea of caring about the characters, I just have no interest. 
Again, I'm not trying to dog on the game. It's just my personal taste. Uh, I would rec highly recommend looking at this game, especially it comes with this version here with the complete edition because it comes with all the DLC and expansions and updates. There's just no reason to ignore it, and I don't even think it's a full price. It's like a $50 game. Okay? That's almost a steal for how much content you're getting in it and how much there is available in this game. There's so much more I can cover. Like There is like you could a cover about this game, but I just don't have the time. But, uh, there's just, thing, there's a lot of tracking, preparations, planning, I mean, you gotta go do it all. There, I mean, like, there's a lot that this game offers to it, so do not or ignore this if you haven't played it yet. I'm sure most people have played it, because a lot of people say it's, like, the best game ever, which I personally have played better, but, I mean, it is what it is, and it is good what they chose to do with it. I have played worse, so, I mean, I, this is a nice, good change, and, um... I'll leave the links that this guy in the description if you want to check out the game for yourself or if you want to buy a copy. Also, uh, if you want to see more videos from me, but I'm sure you're not too happy I'm not saying great things about this game. But I mean, if you want to see more videos from me, hit that like, subscribe button. It encourages me to do better and I hope to give you keep giving you great, great videos like these. So, I thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye! I see you gather before me. Hungry, terrified, clutching your babes to your breast. Emperor Emir has marched his legions into our lands, laid siege to every fortress from here to the Blue Mountains. Rabid and ravenous, he bites and bites away. Men of the North, you stand at the precipice. Your kings have failed you, so now you turn to the gods. And yet you do not plead. You do not kneel to dust your heads with ash. Instead, you wail, why have the gods forsaken us? We must look into the trials we failed long ago. In a time past, our world intertwined with another through an upheaval scholars call the conjunction of the spheres. The gods allowed unholy forces to slip into our domain. The offspring of that cataclysm was the nefarious force called magic. Yet we did not banish it, instead studying the vile arcane for our own power and wealth. And the monsters at our door, the unholy relics of this conjunction, the trolls, the corpse-eaters, the werewolves. Did we raise our swords against them? Or have we laid this burden on others? On so-called witches. Stray children taught the ways of foul sorcery. Their bodies mutated through blasphemous ritual. Sent to fight monsters, though they could not distinguish good from evil. The flicker of humanity long extinguished within them. <laughs> Yes, their numbers have dwindled through the years, but a few still roam our lands, offering their bloody work for coin. To this day, they shame us with their very existence. The North bleeds, flogged by war. The battles are the gods' whip, chastisement for our sins. And let us not forget the terrors, the scourges from beyond our world. The wild hunt rides the sky with every full moon. The Dark Raiders abduct our children into lands unknown. Some say they herald a second conjunction. Can we chart a course back into the light? Will we find the strength to banish the mages from our kingdoms? Unite around the warmth of the eternal fire. Nigh is the time of the sword and axe. None will fight this war in our stead. Nigh is the time of madness and disdain.